The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 20th magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us today. You and I, we get to go look at the circumstance of the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. We're going to go figure out what they're communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to call on in. Now is not too early. 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can call it in. Uh, 727-445-1044. Almost forgot the number, huh? So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent and Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Of course, speaking of shows, if your life was a movie, would you buy a front row seat to it? Hmm. Something to think about. We've got the Dow trading up 211 points. She's trading at 17,886. S&P's up 24 at 2095. NASDAQ composite up 73 points at 4873. Russell 2000 up 20 points. She's trading at 1165. The DAX closed up 330 point to Rooney's out there. The FTSE up 182 points. Gold's trading back about six bucks, 1289. Silver is up eight pennies at 1750. Lights recruit up a buck 13, trading out at 4911. Leading to the upside out here, we've got Priceline. I believe Priceline is moving higher. Well, it was earlier in the day with volume. We'll go check that out as it moves into its swing point high out there. It's trading at 1357. Uh, that's up 47 bucks. You've got Credit Acceptance Corp. That's trading up uh, 12 bucks, 7 percent. Amazon is up uh, one and one and a half percent, up 11. Google's up eight dollars. Uh, Shire PLC is up six. Tesla's up five or six bucks. Baidu's up five. So the downside leading the charge, you've got uh, Brookfield Business Partners. I think they showed up last last week. They're down 23 percent, seven bucks the downside. Eagle Pharmaceuticals up 10, 11 percent, down about five bucks. Other than that, it's mostly ETFs or ETNs that show up on my screen. Press Gainey Holdings, that's the other one, but that's down a buck 86, so not a lot to the downside. Okay, so let's go see what the markets are doing, why they stopped where they did earlier in the day, um, and uh, what are the levels to be paying attention to. You know, today we'll actually spend some time, I won't do it right right out of the bat, but we'll, we'll go focus on the, uh, on the ETF structures because they happen to show us some nice levels of uh, support and resistance that we're going to want to pay attention to. But first, let's start by taking a look at the uh, daily contracts. It, oops, that wasn't the uh, page I wanted. Uh, the daily futures equity contracts out here. And let's start by like, taking a look at the Dow. It's really, I think the Dow... The Dow's going to be the number. The Dow's going to be the one that we're going to want to pay attention to. Here's the Dow futures. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, of course, you see a nice little um, yellow dash box um, on my uh, chart out here. And that yellow dash box says what? says consolidation. In fact, if we step back just for a moment and I were to ask you, because this is about the most important question that you should ask yourself each and every day, is what kind of a market are we in right now? What kind of market are we in right now? Right then, for, we're taking a look at the Dow, so I might as well just do this. Um, let's go back. Let's been a, Now, what type of a market from a long-term perspective, right? So from the longer-term perspective, let's go back. Let's take a look at a, a monthly chart out here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these lines because we can always put them in here. So what type of a market are we in as we take a look at the Dow since we're going to go take a look at the Dow futures, right? you got to be able to answer that question. 
Well, there's really, and there's really three three options out here. There's really, it's more than three, but uh, we'll call it we'll call it uh, three ish type options, right? Bull market, bear market, right? Those are your first two that you have to identify. So the easiest way to do that is what? To take a look at a, a trend line. So long term, if we just simply come from the 2009 lows, and then we just simply, we're going to go ahead and use the most conservative trend line out here because that's what we like to do. We're conservative when we take a look at investing our money. And we take a look at the October lows in 2011. That's going to be our trend line. So what is it that you and I see? We can see that price is where? It is above the trend line. So what does that say? says we're in an absolute long-term bull market. There ain't no bull about that. The trend is our friend. The trend has not been broken. So numero uno, we know that we are in a bull market. Now, we happen to be in a bull market where that trend has been tested. It was trended for many months out here. And we've got that third option. And these are the markets that are the most difficult to navigate through. And that is what we are in is a sideways consolidation. Now, inside the Dow, we would say that the consolidation, in essence, has been going on since about um, the end of 2012. And we're in the middle of 2016. So the market has been in a strong bull market that now has been consolidating for a little over two years. Now, the consolidation levels, which in essence is about where the Dow is trading now, it's not really up to the exact top top of it, but you got to give it a little bit of range out here. Um, and at the bottom of the consolidation, we're going to say is around 16,000. We're just going to 16,000 even, Stephen. And to the upside, we're going to call it, um, let's call it 18. What can we call it out here? Let's call it. It's going to call it like 18, 18, 250, somewhere right around. We'll call it 18,000 here at 17, 874 right now. So we're up towards the top of the consolidation. It's an area where you could certainly see the market uh, uh, pull back from here, no question. It's got to get below that trend line. If it gets below that trend line, out here, then that says the consolidation rules. And the consolidation rules means that price could go all the way back down to the bottom of that consolidation area, which is about, again, 50, what we call it 16,000. But what we know right now, it's still trading inside its all time swing point high out here. And that is the May of 2015. In fact, that happened to be, right, that was the all time high out here. That was at 18,351. The low out there, 17,733. You know, more likely than not, that level is going to be uh, tested out here. So sideways market. Now, let's step back just a moment. Let's go take a look at the daily contract for the uh, futures for the uh, Dow. You're going to see its own little consolidation that, in essence, has been around since the uh, end of March out here. And we take a look at where price stopped this morning and the level that you're going to be focused on, or I'm going to be focused on it, is going to be the top of that TAS weekly profile. That stopped price uh, in its tracks out here. And that profile formed the week that began June 13th. So this is the first time that we are testing a significant level of resistance, right? So the Dow is up near, as we see, it's up near the top of a resistance level. It's long-term consolidation. I don't have any clues that tell me whether or not it's going to be broken, broken through out here. Um, we can see that intraday today, price hit, not to the tick, um, but very close to it. The top of that weekly profile box is 17,843. The actual high interest session today, 17,854. So 17,843 is the first number that you want to be paying attention to. The second number inside the Dow future is going to be 17,989. If we do get above that, we may have a break of that consolidation pattern. That was a pretty good one. That's like about a 2,000 point consolidation that would take these markets even higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 181, SP is up 21. So during that first break, what we established, we're taking a look at the Dow. And the reason we're taking a look at the Dow is because it gave us that first signal earlier in the day that it got up towards that resistance. You know, we've got the Olympics that are starting. And just like any kind of athlete out there, we're going to call the Dow one of the athletes that you and I are paying attention to. It is struggling, struggling to get above resistance. Now, it has been trying to get above that resistance zone. It didn't set up right away. But in essence, we the first time that that resistance zone really established itself, we'll call it back in uh, March of 2015 when the Dow got up to the 18 288 level. Now, the nice thing about a consolidation market is that when you, I first, you, you want to be able to identify those as early as you can because, let's face it, you wouldn't want to buy the uh, any consolidating market right as it's nearing its top and it hasn't proven itself, that'd be the area that you would actually be looking from a trade standpoint. You'd be looking to sell. If you break a consolidation to the upside or to the downside, then we use that uh, measuring measured move um, rectangular box that it uh, will form out there because that gives us then a price projection. That's when you would want to consider buying a breakout when you've broken through a long-term consolidation. You know, at least you now have a, a good enough reward to risk. Now, it's got to be a large enough reward in order to go ahead and fend off that resist. And you wouldn't want to put your risk at the bottom of that consolidation. It'd be tucked somewhere underneath a level of support um, that was broken through, or resistance that was broken through that should become support out here. So we can see here the last three months, just as we look at the current candles here for the Dow, small bodied candles, they tell us it's tired. Doesn't mean that it won't break through. We're up towards the top. We're in a bullish consolidating market. Market. That is the read out here. That is the only read if you're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, trend lines. And we're still trading inside the swing point from May of 2015. Okay, we, we have that established. We know what we're looking for. What else is it that you and I can take a look for for some clues here, at least today, June 20th, with regard to what's going on? Well, if we take a look at the uh, Dow, we take a look at its um, McClellan oscillator. That's the advanced decline oscillator at the very bottom of the screen. We know two things out here. We know that when the oscillator reading is above zero, right now the reading is 0.59, that qualifies as above zero, then it tells us that buyers are the ones that are in control. Now, 
buyers are in control as we take a look at the Dow, but they're also up against this little diagonal area of resistance. That is the short-term trend line, right? We just took a look at a very long-term trend line. Now we're taking a look at a short-term trend line. This is the one from February, right? So February low out here inside the Dow, February 11th. And then our next trend point touch that we're going to use is going to be the low of May 19th. Now, Price was above it, stayed above it, came back, tested it here on the day of June 13th. It held, and then it finally cracked the very next day. Now, when you break a level of support, um, if you're really going to be short-term, because that's all we're talking about here, short-term bearish, you actually do want to see a level of support that failed to act as support now all of a sudden act as resistance. Well, today is that test. You can see that where the Dow is trading right now at 17,856. It's pretty much right on that trend line. So we have a little conflict of interest here. A conflict, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but we're going to go with it. We have some, uh, we, have, we have one that's a bullish message, the advanced decline oscillator reading above zero says it's buyers that are in control. We've got a trend line that so far has held this thing in check. So what does that mean? That means if the Dow finishes up towards its session high today, by the way, the high so far today, I think I mentioned earlier, 17,946, you close up there, then you'll have confirmation here. You will have broken back inside the trend. You will have a price, uh, not a price oscillator, but you'll have the advanced decline oscillator above zero. That then says you go at least and test the highs out here, not too much further from where we're trading, that at the 18,016. But then more likely than not, says you're going to go test the April 20th high, and that's out at 18,167. And then that says you go test the all-time high from back in May of 2015. Um, if we don't get this result, maybe the market says, you know what, I'm at resistance, the heck with you, I'm going to go test out the uh, lows today, you get the advanced decline oscillator back below zero, you'll know that you are at a significant resistance level. It doesn't say necessarily sell the market, but you know you have got some significant resistance, and that helps us in identifying what the market is trying to communicate to us. Now, what's another area that we're going to be paying attention to today? Take about, talk about, or take about, whichever one you want to say out here, but I'm going to talk about. New York Stock Exchange. Now, as we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, we know because of our keen eye out here, we know that on the trading day of June 6, there was just a slight little gap up, created a little gap. What's a gap? That says that the low of that day is higher than the high of the previous day, which was 10,504.46. The low of that day on uh, June 6 was uh, 10,508. Just a very slight gap. Well, the reason why that's important is because of the gap down that took place on June 10th, when the high of that session was 10,501, created a little gap out here. Now, the reason why that's important is because that creates what's referred to as an island top. Now, an island top kind of Think of it as, I don't know, Gilligan's Island, where the professor, Marianne, the skipper, too, they get stranded on Gilligan's Island. It is a bearish pattern. Just like in Gilligan's Island, what it means is nobody's coming to save you at least not for a while. Now, when you do get saved, you're like, hey, life is good. Well, market is in a bullish pattern, even inside the New York Stock Exchange. If buyers out here decide to go save and close that gap and then get above that high out here from June 8th, which is what I suspect the New York Stock Exchange wants to do because it is so bullish out here, that it wants to get up to that wall. It wants to get to 10,648.04, and it wants to get over that level. And if it does, there is nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. So far, thus far as we speak, that level has acted as resistance. The low of the session from June 9th, which is 10,553, the high so far today is 10,527. At this stage here, the market has found resistance up here. So what is that telling us? Right now, you've got the Dow at a resistance level. We took a look at the Dow futures. We took a look at the trend line inside the Dow. We see another trend line. Now, the trend line inside the New York Stock Exchange, and I'm glad that you brought that up to me. Yes, you are exactly right. Price is trading above that level. And you're also correct in that the advanced decline oscillator is slightly above zero. If you look in the data box, you're going to see the reading is 17.26. That tells us that it is the buyers that are in control at 125. This is a better end-of-day indicator than it is intraday. But at least we know right now who's got the game, who's got the ball inside the game out here. But what you and I are first watching for inside the New York Stock Exchange is going to be a close above 10,553.25. 
You get that? That says, boy, you've got the passenger ship has come back. They were only gone for just a few days out here. And then if you see price get above 10648 that says that they will have set sail for higher places. And in our case, it would be higher prices inside of the New York Stock Exchange. So those are the two areas. Now, what I've done here, kind of unique, I think, is I put together the actual New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ Composite Advanced Decline Oscillator. And right now, that reading is just slightly under the zero line. And that's important. Because as you can take a look at on my chart out here, this is the combination. There is no index. This is called adding the New York Stock Exchange to the NASDAQ Composite. But the interesting thing about this, which is going to cover just about everything out here, not everything, but just about everything, is that when it gets above zero, markets run higher out here. So right now, guess what? It is also at resistance. A lot of resistance out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's take a ride on the reading. I don't even know what that means, but uh, I used to say it. Well, I think we used to say that when we played Monopoly, did we not? Let's go back three years. 
to the June time frame. Today's June the uh, 20th. Let's go back to uh, the June time frame in 2013. And let's go take a look at the DAX. I mentioned that the DAX had closed up like 330 points or so. You know, is there any meaning behind what the DAX did to give us a clue as to what the markets want to do out here? You and I, we're just technical traders out here. So we, we look for the market is the one that is telling us the story. You and I are just simply the narrator of the story it's telling us. And if we go back to June of 2013, we take a look at the story that it was telling us. It had made a pretty decent correction. It went from a high out here. Well, let me tell you what it did. Let me see if I can figure that out. It went from a high on May 22nd of 85.57, went all the way down to a low of 76.55. So 900 points or so, that would be about a 12% correction. Now my math is probably off just a little bit. That was just in my head as far as what the uh, math might be, somewhere right around there. So pretty darn good correction out here, right? I'm sure at that time, there were, everybody was saying, bear market out here. That's it, the top was in for the uh, DAX and it was headed lower. Now it had a different idea. You know how you, you flip each page out here in a book when you're reading a story? Is sometimes there's a new character that appears. And in the case of the Dax out here, that new character that appeared on July 11th, 7-Eleven. It was like they were at the craps table. And no, they were not saying crap. Because what we can see out here, as we go ahead and we expand this uh, chart here for the uh, Dax, we can see a nice gap down that uh, formed out here on uh, June 20th. Nice gap, the top of that gap, 80, 85 out here. And then for a period of between June 20th and July 9th out here, uh, there was a nice little island that formed out here as well. Now this is down towards the market moving lower out here. But guess what? On July 11th, 711, what the DAX did was it went ahead and gapped up. So this had formed an island bottom out here, an island bottom. And guess what? That turned out to be a significant low inside of the market. Price came back, tried to maybe save those passengers on the island, but guess what? It was full of a bunch of bulls. As price was coming back there, they said, get out of here. They just blew that ship away. They didn't want to come in anywhere near that island bottom that formed out here. Fast forward to where we're at today. Happens to be June. I don't know if there's a coincidence here or not, but here's what we know. The DAX here made a high, and that high came in on April 21st, up at about the level of 10,474. 10,474 down to a level of 9550. Now, again, if I'm going to do math out here, that's like a 9 to 10% correction out there. I could be wrong, but correct me, please. But about a 9 to 10% correction, and I'm sure everybody has written off the DAX and said, there's trouble in River City. Well, there was trouble in River City until a new character arrived. There was a new sheriff in town, and that new sheriff arrived today. And in doing so, created its next island bottom out here. So with regard to Brexit, Schmexit, no idea what that actually means out there. Maybe the market, the storyteller out here, has already told us the story as to what the markets are going to do. Now, in the case of the DAX, on its way up, because that's certainly the way that it looks, see, until we turn that next page, which is going to be Thursday night, Friday morning, we really won't know. But it's a thriller, right? Everybody's sitting on the edge of their seats, turning the page, just one by one by one, one page at a time out here. Uh, guess what? You and I, we're good at reading the message of the markets. So today, perhaps the most important candle session, there's probably others out there, but this is the one that I've uh, just located as we were turning the pages out here to say, hey, internationally, what's going on? The DAX out here formed a nice island bottom. I believe the last time that it formed an island bottom was in June of 2013. It is June 2016. We'll see if it is deja vu. Now, it's got a slight problem. You know, the second thing that it needs to do, and it needs to do that tomorrow, the next day, or what have you, is break its short-term trend line. If we take a look at what's going on around the globe, we just take a look at these four indices, the Hang Seng being the top panel, the DK being the one just underneath it, then the DAX, that's in slot number three, and finally the FTSE in the UK in slot number four. Four, you can see that the Hang Seng, it's sailing. It's uh, got a, it's, it, it's kind of like the Russell 2000. 
actually a little bit weaker. Not, not, not that much. It uh, has had no problem maintaining its trend line from February in 2016. So the Hang Seng, no problems out there. In the case of the Nikkei, eh, a little bit of problem. Had a nice move last night, had a nice move on Friday out here. It still has its trend line to contend with. It needs to get back above it. I don't know, somewhere in the 16, 330 ish type range. Don't hold me to the exact number, but it's somewhere right around there. Inside the DAX, you can see got the island bottom. Still hasn't gotten back inside its trend. That's its next step, right? On the very next page, you and I should be anticipating if this thing really is a nice alien bottom out here, the next message is going to be it's going to get above that trend line. The trend line, the short-term trend line, is what we're referring to, which is coming off of the February low out here, February 11th. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll, and what's, what's the price on this? Not too much higher than where it traded up to today. Say 10075 uh, for you know, giggles out here. Now, how about the FTSE? The FTSE, look what it did today. Zoom, 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 right up into that trend line. Talk about markets that are just sitting on the edge of their seats out there. I, I don't even have any more fingernails because it's so exciting. It's, you know, there's so much anticipation and excitement in this market. But right now, you got the, you know, the FTSE is sitting there right on its trend line. It wants to get back above that. If it does, you know, and we'll watch to see what the FTSE does tomorrow. It's possible that the markets have shot their wad today. You know, as the futures market opened up last night, U.S., well, it was really, I believe, Africa that first was trading to the upside. Then Asia came along. Then the U.S. Uh, markets opened up. No, it was uh, no, Africa, then the U.S. markets, futures markets. Then Asia came along. Then Europe came along. It's just been one big happy party out here. Uh, but uh, we've got some resistance levels that have to be broken throughout here. And if they do. Um, you're looking at some pretty big moves, at least inside the United States. And in that case, you know, we're going to be taking a look at the Dow. But uh, the DAX, maybe you want to trade an international market. It, uh, this whole uh, Brexit thing, however it, the vote turns out, doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, just uh, got a really nice signal. Could be a really significant bottom inside of the DAX. Hmm. Something to think about. Now. What else can we go take a look at? Hey, big movements inside of the uh, currency markets out here. But they've kind of been big movements during the day, intraday. There's been some pretty big swings out here. Big swings inside the uh, euro, Japanese yen. That's a monthly chart. Let's go put up the uh, daily chart out here, see what we've got. Take a look at that. This thing has uh, made a nice, uh, well, I don't recall exact time when it made its high out here. You can see, but it has sold off. If we put up a 10-minute chart, that'll probably go ahead and give us the uh, figure. So you can see, don't pay attention to the volume out here but the actual high that it formed back at about um, 1240 in the evening it's now making an a to b equals cd the downside getting right back to uh, where it had uh, you know we got this little gap in here uh, where it had opened up uh, last night uh, it's just coming back to a, a potential level of support out here that's in the euro japanese yen we've got the uh, dow up 183 s p of 21 composite up 64 we'll be right back Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Hey, I'm a man of my word out here, and I did say we would take a look at the ETF series out there. I just got too carried away in taking a look at the international market. So let's go take a look at the ETF structures out here because they're all at interesting levels as well. If we take a look at the QQQ series, we start off taking a look at it. You're going to see that price has now gotten back above that trend line. It was really only below it on uh, Friday. And uh, uh, quickly right back above it. It, too, running right into a resistance loan, uh, zone out here. That's the top of its uh, weekly market profile. That price point, by the way, 108.07. If you get above that, what you should anticipate is the uh, Qs would make a move up to the uh, price point of 109.09. That should be their next move. To the downside, uh, the Qs ought to have pretty good support at 107.05. Right now, you're trading out at 107.87. Volume in today's action, relatively light, 12 million in shares uh, thus far. Um, but above the trend, trend is still its friend, just trying to take out some horizontal resistance out there. Again, that number 10807. In the case of the IWM, the IWM, as we can see, never broke its trend line. Uh, so here is the indice, index ETF, that is the strongest out here. I mentioned that the Hang Seng looked a little bit like this, looked uh, almost exactly uh, like this out here. In the case of the IWM, a uh, nice little uh, gap up this morning. Morning, because of course, you know, all of these are going to get you know gapped up here. Volume today 16 million shares. Um, you know, not uh, nothing huge, a little bit light volume. It's a Monday out here. Uh, look, here's the here are the key levels to be watching. In the case of the IWM, much like the uh, Dow Futures contract, um, it hit its weekly resistance zone. That number is 116.51. The actual high today, 116.45. we got to give it a few pennies. I'm going to say visually, it basically hit resistance out here. Now, it's got to not just clear that level of 116.51. It's got to clear 116.95, which really means what it's got to do next is clear June 8th. If, in fact, the uh, and the IWM is headed up to test that level, which is at least the low of that swing point, 117.65, we're trying to take out the high at 118.64. Uh, so that's what you want to be watching for there. There's already a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, but it's a huge, huge one out there. We're not even going to pay attention to that. We're going to first just pay attention to these levels of resistance that it has to uh, take out um, in order to continue that move higher, that ascent to the top of uh, Mount Everest. If we take a look at the uh, spies, the spies here, 
showing that they're struggling about diagonal resistance. Well, mostly diagonal, the trend line resistance, right? In the case of the spies, it broke through the uh, little trend line. That's a trend line from February 11th. Next touch point out here is May the 19th. And it broke back below that level June 14th. Now, today's volume inside the spies, light volume, 46 million shares. You know, best case, it does, I don't know, 90 million shares, something like that. Uh, that's after coming down with 117 on uh, Friday. Of course, we had options expiration, quad witching. So I don't know, volume... You know, you got this trend line, the S&P, the SPY, and the trend line basically says you got to get above today's high in order to get over that trend line. That makes that line just a tad higher tomorrow. So far, today's high inside the SPY has been 209.61. What it really needs to do in order to move to the upside at much higher prices, it needs to clear the price point of 211.55. That is a significant level of resistance inside of the SPY. It's a first little hurdle, though, is going to come at 210.23. Let's finish this off. Let's go take a look at the Dow Diamonds. Let's give you some numbers on the uh, Dow Diamonds. You can see the Dow here hitting the uh, trend line. Same trend line off of the uh, February lows out here, or very close to it. What the uh, diamonds need to do in order to get up over that is a close above 179.45. Really, if it closes above 178.80, uh, that goes a long way to saying I'm back to being bullish. But we are looking for 179.45. Then it goes and it tests the highs out here from April 20th. And then you continue going back to the left-hand side of the chart. That's going to eventually take you into the May 2015 level. So if it can get back inside the trend, it will truly be its friend. And that's what's going on inside of the ETFs out here. Let's go take a look at, oh, the VIX index. Uh, somebody wrote in and said, would I take a look at the VIX index? And the answer is I will. They wanted to know where is the VIX index going? So here's the numbers. I'll give you the numbers to be paying attention to. And uh, today is the number that uh, you that you want to be watching is 1707. Uh, the VIX is trading out at uh, 1735. It created its own little island as well out here, an island top. I don't know with inside the VIX whether that has any meaning or not, but I'll throw it out there to you. If Let's assume that it does have meaning, the same meaning. Well, it just set up a significant uh, high. And if that's the case and you were asking me where is the cash VIX index going to trade to, the answer is very simple, 1319 or lower somewhere right in that vicinity 1319 that's the number today could change tomorrow out here but that's the number i give you in order for that to really occur the first number that you want to see you'd like to see the vix close below 1707 if it closes below 1707 today that almost guarantees but it's a not a guarantee but it almost guarantees at least what it does is it increases the probability that's the best way to uh, uh, to frame it it increases the probability that you're going to see move down into the 15 ish range 15 13 you know or so 15.99 for sure at 1599 you get below that that's the 15 13 that opens up the door to 1319 so one step at a time vix index uh, forming a island top out there uh, maybe somebody wants to go do the study on that see how often uh, that occurs uh, island tops or bottoms whether or not it makes a difference inside of the uh, cash vix index out here i don't know if it does or it doesn't but those are the numbers that i would be watching for okay so uh, with a few minutes left in this segment and then i think we've got eight, nine or so in the last segment out here, or four maybe, something like that. Let's go take a look at some individual equities out here. Try to figure out what they're communicating to us. Priceline. I mentioned Priceline because it was up about 47 bucks, up 44.40 as we speak right now. That's a little over 3%. Now, earlier in the uh, trading session, it was moving higher with some uh, pretty nice volume out here. Let's see. The swing point that it's contending with is, uh, well, be easier if you could see it with me. The swing point that it's contending with is uh, June 7th. Now, that had swing point of 865,000 shares. So volume has dissipated quite a uh, bit out here. Let me see here. I put the 10-minute chart. We'll go see what kind of, yeah, real dissipation here in the uh, volume. So it was that big spike early on that really just started giving way at about uh, 10, 20, 10, 30, 11 o'clock or so. Nonetheless, out here, if the uh, if price line is able to close inside uh, or above 1345.01, you're at 1353. Volume or not, says you're going to go test 1373.98. The real test inside of Priceline is going to be what does it do if it is able to get to 
138698. That's its real level of resistance out there. Nice gap down, uh, wide price spread, accelerated volume to the downside. That could be a significant level of resistance. 138698 had 2.6 million shares. You get above that, says you go close the gap most likely, and that would take price into about the 1430 range at a minimum out here. But uh, price line should go test. I'm going to say it's going to make a run for the 1373.98 to 1386.98 level. PCLN being the ticker symbol there. Let's take a look at uh, not much to the downside out here, really individual stock wise. Let's see what Amazon is doing. AMZN up 11 and a half bucks, 1.6 tenths percent out here. Stock chart looks uh, really uh, good. Um, you know, consolidation up at its highs out here. It's got that danger zone if we were to gap down somehow tomorrow below or someday here uh, without having to fully, fully close that gap because it could create that on top. But, you know, that's just a potential. It would need to gap down below 686.98 in order to do that. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We've got the Dow up 197. S&P's up 22. We'll be right back. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EverBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY, a periodic rate of interest, is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, uh, folks, for the last segment here. We've got the Dow up 198, S&P's up by 22. Every request to take a look at dust out here. Dust happens to be the Direction Daily Gold Miners Bear, three times 300% position. So in order to take a look at that, 
Um, a couple of things. We'd want to take a look. I'd want to take a look at gold. Hey, what's gold doing? It's trading down uh, four bucks out here. No big deal. Trading down to 1291 uh, 10 right now. Now, what I'd want to understand is what is gold doing? Has it held support levels out here? And as we take a look at Goldilocks, the answer is yes. The move down here so far, interest session. If you take a look at the Stevie's red line, this is a red line that you're going to pay attention to. Um, and uh, especially pay attention to it if I could speak correctly out here. Uh, just uh, every now and then I can, and sometimes I quaint. It's that ventriloquist behind me that's pulling the strings that sometimes screws that up. Um, if we take a look at the level that you want to be paying attention to here, so if you're in dust, you're looking to get in dust, if you're looking for confirmation, you really need to see gold priced below this level. That level, 1278.90. That price is going to be different uh, 10 minutes from now. Well, I don't know about 10 minutes from now, but it'll be different uh, tomorrow. But that's a good enough price. Just say 1292. You get below 1292, then you might have some action Jackson out here. Now, that's with regard to gold. Um, just simply because of the correlation uh, between the two. Oh, let's uh, come out here and actually take a look at the XA. Well, let's put up dust. D U S T. Let's see if there's any kind of pattern here. Whoops, I'm not put up D U S Y like for dusty roads out here, but uh, we'll put up dust, D U S T, or do D. I'll put D. I, I can't spell that well either. It's just, uh, there we go. I got dust out here. Let's go see what we've got inside of dust. Uh, so, in the case of dust, using the same system out here, in order for this to uh, look good for a dust trade, you're going to need to see a close above uh, 14, uh, 11, 14, 1177 is the number that you're looking for. You get above 1177, and then you've got some action, Jackson. Now, let's go take a look at the XAU out here. Um, as opposed to the 300 percenter, we're going to get better uh, information as we take a look at the actual indice out here. And what we know about the XAU is that it uh, made a higher high, no question. Each time it's done that over the course of the last uh, seven, eight trading sessions, the first one, first one being June 10th, we're at June 20th out here. So 10 calendar days ago, we saw the XAU get higher price, give it up on price, turned into a bearish engulfing as price was moving higher, doing it with less energy. It was not really enthusiastic as it was making that high. Pulled back for a few days, got below Stevie's red line out here. It did that back on uh, June 14th. But post-haste, uh, Janet Yellen or somebody said something. Jobs Friday, I think is what it might have been. And it was off to the races again. However, the XAU made a higher high here on June 16th. So that was last week on Thursday. I believe that was Yellen Day. And as price got higher, it was the bears that were yelling because the XAU sold off, created a dark cloud cover candle. Not as bearish as the bearish engulfing, uh, but uh, still a bearish reversal signal after a previous one out here on uh, June the 10th. So with regard to hurdle levels, right, the XAU has got to uh, get above that in order to maintain that bullishness. What the XAU has actually done today, as you can see, so this is the better gauge with regard to dust and what might be going on. You can see that all that it's done here in intercession so far is it's come up and tested a level of resistance. That level of resistance, by the way, is priced at, I wish I could tell you for sure, it looks like 91, 34, 24, or 14. That's the best that I can. Well, I could put up the data box. That would tell me for sure. Uh, that would be nice of me, wouldn't it? Just say, hey, put up the data box, uh, Steve-O. Like where, where's the data box? Here's the data box. Show data box. There we go. The uh, price point that it needs to get above would be um, 91.32. That's the number. It gets above 91.32. I would not want to be long. D-U-S-T. Hey, folks, stay tuned. Our favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Have a great Monday. We'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.